at the end of August of this year, I started to feel those emotions that surround feeling burned out. And so I wisely decided to take a step back from my ministry that I do here online and from social media. sharing with you a lot on burnout today, why we even get to a place of burning out. That's a good thing to understand so that we don't find ourselves in this dilemma again. My name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel where I discuss mental health and how to look at it through the lens of being a believer in Christ. A lot of what I share will be overcoming depression, anxiety, burnout, trauma, these types of things. So if you are interested in this, take a look at other videos I have for you. My first experience with burnout happened when my husband and I lived overseas, living out our dream career as missionaries serving God. Between the two of us, we already had about six to eight years of service under our belts. The particular season that we were in when I experienced burnout was quite full full of ministry, full of health issues, which I was trying to recover from, and also for myself, full of internal chaos. The stress that we were constantly under and the busyness of it all had taken their toll on me and I, I was in for a whirlwind of emotions, intense emotions. And for myself, it seemed to be an unending stream of all of these wounds that were surfacing in my heart. At the time, I had no idea what was going on with me. It was traumatic, it was frightening, and it would put me on a journey of recovery like no other. So it's not surprising that the real fear of re-experiencing this burnout, as well as the fear of it being worse the second time around, has continued to loom somewhere over my head ever since. And when I come close to feeling even the slightest red flag of being overstressed, my brain begins to scream at me, danger, and very loudly. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not angry with my brain doing its God-given job. Our brains have been created by God to keep us protected and safe. However, this built-in alert system was making it very difficult for me to live my life as I truly desired. I'm still on that road of recovery, meeting an amazing trauma specialist and doing all that I can to get healthier every single day. But before I go any further, let me share some things with you that I've researched on burnout because I am a nerd for researching these things that impact our mental health. Burnout, real burnout, like intense burnout that's impacted you on a deep level can impact the brain and the body in negative ways. True burnout, not just a passing feeling of burnout, can impact our cognitive skills. The amygdala in our brain, the part of the brain that controls our response to fear or other emotional reactions. The amygdala enlarges from all the unceasing stress, resulting in a number of issues. One, the inability to regulate overwhelming emotions. And our prefrontal cortex, where where we have executive function is also negatively impacted by the high levels of stress. And then we can look at the neuronal circuits in our brain, which are the pathways in our brain where it communicates with itself. These can be damaged as well. And I find it very interesting that individuals that have experienced extreme trauma have similar damaging effects in their brains as well. So you can agree with me that having chronic stress in your life is a super unhealthy way of living. And how how chronic stress harms the brain makes complete sense why burnout creates issues with our creativity, problem solving, and working memory. The symptoms of burnout. Having feelings of exhaustion, reduced creativity, a loss of passion with your work, and instead having cynicism, falling under negativity, which definitely is similar symptoms to depression. And then of course, possible physical symptoms as well. Now I wanna discuss what causes burnout and how we can be aware that we are living under chronic stress. So burnout results when there is no healthy balance between workload, stressors in our life, and the rewards or recognition and rest and relaxation that we need. It also involves more than just long work hours in a job. It involves how we're being treated at the workplace. If there is fairness involved, 
involved, if there's recognition, if we have a good work environment. And then clarity with our responsibilities and our roles are very important. If we receive respect and if we're rewarded for our work that we put in. It is also important to know that our personalities and the thought patterns that we fall into can play their parts on whether or not we develop burnout as well. And I do have to say, chronic stress can also be experienced outside of a job. An individual can live under chronic stress from just life stressors alone, which if they already have a stressful career can only increase their chances of developing burnout. Anyone living under chronic stress, where chronic means constantly reoccurring, is living under constant stress with no breaks. Nada, nothing, zip, zero. So it's not too difficult to identify yourself as living with chronic stress. And of course, if you develop the symptoms of burnout, which I shared with you earlier, these will also inform you if you have chronic stress in your life. So why do we allow ourselves to live under so much stress in our lives? Life stressors are hard to avoid outside of a job, simply because there are other people in our lives and there will be circumstances that we cannot control. We can learn techniques techniques and tools that can help us in stressful times or around others that bring us stress. And a lot of us are privileged to be able to even choose the jobs we work at. So why do we still choose to endure these stressful jobs that are hard and overwhelming for us? Obviously, I don't know the answer to this question for you or other people, but I have been able to answer this question for myself. And as I choose to share with you why I've allowed myself to live under chronic stress, which has definitely resulted in and burnout. Perhaps this will give you some type of understanding of why you allow yourself to live under chronic stress. I wisely decided to take a step back from my ministry that I do here online. I took a couple of road trips, evaluated a lot of things in my life, journaled a great deal, definitely met with the Lord as much as time would allow. And what I discovered about myself really, really surprised me. However, it did not catch me off guard. So burnout is actually not my problem, but rather a symptom of something else. My personal issue with developing burnout is perfectionism, coupled with sometimes becoming a workaholic. So looking at Forbes.com, they share with us certain personality traits that allow a person to likely develop burnout symptoms. These personality traits are agreeableness, so you agree easily with a lot of things. Neuroticism, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This means you're nervous, you're hostile and impulsive, and you have a high intellect and imagination. You're inventive or action oriented or both. I can relate to some of these personality traits and a therapist once told me that my personality is prone to develop depression. Pretty much because I'm so hard on myself and I like to please a lot of people, hence the agreeableness. And being hard on myself leads me to my issue with perfectionism. And that got me <laughs> wanting to understand, well, what are the traits of being a perfectionist? That's my issue. I'm pretty confident that it is. And lo and behold, after I did research on this, I was sadly correct. Traits of a perfectionist are having all or nothing thinking, you are highly critical, you have a fear of not reaching your goals and this actually drives you, your motivation, you have unrealistic standards, you often are results focused rather than enjoying the process, you get depressed by unmet goals, you could easily procrastinate because your worry of doing something imperfectly immobilizes you, and you're defensive when it comes to constructive criticism, and you also have a low self-esteem. Obviously, there are a lot of unhealthy thinking patterns that need to be addressed in these traits. Now, let's discuss the signs of workaholism. So the signs of workaholism, according to Forbes.com as well, you think of how you can free up more time in your schedule to work more. You spend much more time working than you planned. Others in your life tell you that you should cut down on work and you don't listen to them. You become stressed if prohibited from working. Your work has negatively impacted your health. You deprioritize hobbies, exercise, leisure activities, and rest. And you find yourself working in order to reduce feelings of guilt or anxiety or depression or helplessness 
or all of the above. So healing from burnout can take place. That's the good news. However, we have a responsibility on our part to do some needed work with our patterns of thinking that do impact our daily choices and how we prioritize our lives in a healthy manner. We also need to pay attention to our motives and our why behind our toleration of living with chronic stress. And this definitely will lead to some hard work where we need to address the wounds we ourselves need healing from and correct it in order to see change in behavior. <laughs>